Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and this past week was filled with a ton of Mac news, as well as some other things with the upcoming iPhone and more. And so this is the news update for the week of January 17th, 2021. And the first thing has to do with the next iPhone, the iPhone 13. And so this year we got the redesign with the squared off edges. And of course, again, face ID with the larger notch. However, Mark Gurman this year is confirming that Apple is considering an under display fingerprint sensor for 2021 iPhones, as well as face ID. So instead of having to bring up your phone and look at it when wearing a mask and then put in your passcode, you could just push your thumb down similar to what we have with say Samsung phones where they have under the screen fingerprint sensors. So to have both of those combined, maybe even for more secure purchases, I think would be welcome. So Mark German is backing up what other people have said. So it looks like they may be working on that. Also, he did highlight that Apple is working on foldable phones as has been previously reported, but that it would be years away. And Apple usually usually looks into new technologies, sees what they're like, sort of prototypes them, tries them out, just like any company would that's in technology, figures out the best way to do it and whether or not it's a viable product to sell. So we may see a foldable phone, but it looks like it'll be years out, according to Mark Gurman. And speaking of prototype iPhones, a user by the name of Giulio Zampetti on Twitter posted this specific blue iPhone 12 pro running switchboard, which is basically an internal version of iOS 14 for testing. And you can see this is a prototype iPhone without any markings on it whatsoever. I thought maybe you'd think that's pretty interesting. So Apple does prototype things quite a ways out and then they release them to the public. Once they nail everything down, get it really solid for the consumer. And so the next thing I've mentioned before is that Apple may be continuing to work on a next generation iPhone SE that we could see as soon as April. So this is the first generation. We had the second generation last year. We may see a third generation iPhone SE. There's still competing rumors on whether or not we'll see a larger version of this, which would be closer to say a 6S Plus, for example. But according to Mac Atacara, we may see a third generation as soon as April. And that goes along with AirPods Pro. So where we have AirPods Pro now, where they've had some issues with recalls and things like that, Apple may give us a second generation version along with that iPhone SE as soon as April. And so we may see a new version of those with a thinner case, like I've mentioned before. Whether or not the actual AirPod itself will be redesigned is hard to say, but it looks like they're working on it. And of course, we have updated AirPods every few years, it seems like. So of course, keep your eyes open for that. We should see something like that. Now, according to Apple Insider, Apple is working on new cases for iPhones as well. Many people have been asking me, where is the battery case for the iPhone 12 series? We haven't seen that yet. And Apple is apparently working on new case designs that could also charge your AirPods. So according to this patent that Apple Insider found, you could see sort of some different designs or modular designs where you could combine your AirPods outside of the case they come with to charge within the iPhone. I'm not sure I would want this necessarily, but I like to see that they're actually trying different ideas, patenting new ideas, whether or not they ever make these available to the public, of course, is yet to be seen. It could be years out, but at least they're trying some new things. Now, Apple is said to be working on a podcast subscription service. Now, I personally don't use the Apple podcast app because I think there's other alternatives that are better, such as Overcast and others out there. And so podcasts having a subscription may bring some of those things that we see on Spotify over to the iPhone. Apparently, Apple Apple's looking into this. There's no confirmed things about this, but if we do see it, I would think we'd see it sometime around WWDC in June where we should see iOS 15. So maybe we'll see some new services launched along with that, maybe earlier than that, but at least if they're going to launch some new services, there's usually some time from around June where we see WWDC 2021. Now, speaking of the next iOS update, I would expect something such as iOS 14.3.1 or maybe a similar number as soon as tomorrow. And the reason I say tomorrow is today is a holiday in the United States. It's Martin Luther King Day and Apple rarely releases updates on holidays. So I would expect it as soon as tomorrow. Now, some people are saying there won't be an update until iOS 14.4. However, based off last year, there was an update and 
there's no longer a version you can go back to prior to iOS 14.3. And generally Apple, when they stopped signing previous versions, which they did a week or so ago, we'll see an update within two weeks for another public version. Generally, generally there are two versions you can go to, whether that be 14.3 or previously 14.2.1. They are no longer allowing that. So we should see an update fairly soon based on what they've done in the past. And so I would look for that along with iOS 14.4 beta three, maybe as soon as this week, but more likely next week, based on what we've had before with a public release of iOS 14.4 in March, based on what they did last year with iOS 13.4. So based on all of that information, looking at the past couple of years, what they've done, look for a public release as soon as this week and a new beta or beta three as soon as maybe this week, but more likely next week. Now, the big news this past week has to do with Max. According to Mark Gurman, who has a really good track record, generally when he talks about these things, they usually come to pass. So I would expect these to be pretty accurate and we can expect a 14 inch MacBook pro to replace the current 13.3 inch. Now the form factor shouldn't change too much. And Apple did say that they were going to replace all of their Macs with new Apple Silicon Macs. And so they released the M one MacBook pro that I'm holding here, as well as the MacBook air and the Mac mini, but that was just the beginning. And so we can expect a 14 inch MacBook pro with a different display. And I'll talk more about that in a minute, but also additional ports. So we should see some more ports. Now there's conflicting reports here talking about which ports to expect. So Mark Gurman is just basically mentioning USB-C, but according to Ming-Chi Kuo, we could see even more ports. I would love to see another SD card. I don't think we'll ever see that again, an SD card slot, but also MagSafe being brought back. Now MagSafe is something I really miss. It's a way to connect to the Mac that was magnetic and also charges. The new MagSafe is said to be able to fast charge, and it's not the same sort of MagSafe that we see on the iPhone, or at least I don't think it is. So with MagSafe on the iPhone, you can ad magnetically adhere a charger and that part's really nice and it it was basically an idea on the Mac so that if you kick the cord, it doesn't disconnect or it disconnects from the Mac and your Mac doesn't go tumbling off a desk. For example, I miss that sort of connector. Some people don't like it. I miss it. I think using the port is okay, but I prefer the MagSafe. So that may be coming back according to reports. However, we should see some more ports. I would love to see maybe HDMI brought back and an SD card slot, but I'm not going to hold my breath for that. Hopefully we'll see something like that. But again, a 14 inch form factor and also a 16 inch form factor to replace the current 16 inch. So we should see both of those. And according to Ming-Chi Kuo and Mark Gurman, we should have a redesign again, conflicting reports. Ming-Chi Kuo is saying to expect a much more squared off design where Mark Gurman is saying, expect a redesign, but nothing too dramatic. So I would tend to say it's probably less dramatic instead of being super squared off like that of the surface laptop, for example, but expect a redesign nonetheless. Now, as far as the internals, of course, we'll have an M1 chipset or maybe an M1X or M2, something with more power and hopefully a dedicated GPU because we've had that in the past. But the question is whether or not Apple's actually going to make their own or they're going to continue to use something like AMD's Radeon 6800 XT or something like that. That's a mobile version. So whether or not they're going to use something along those lines or, or their own chips is yet to be seen, but either way, expect it to be very fast and come as soon as the third quarter of this year. Now there's some other news with the MacBooks as well. They're said to have a brighter and more high contrast display. So like this display, this is fairly bright, the M one MacBook display, but we could have a transition over to mini led, which I've been talking about for quite some time, which would make it closer to an HDR display, be much brighter, maybe a thousand nits, for example, and help you better edit footage from say an iPhone 12 pro that has full HDR support. So with Dolby vision, HDR having much brighter needs basically for that footage to be edited on, I would love to see that brought over to the MacBooks. So expect a larger display that's more edge to edge, but also maybe a much brighter display with mini led on both the 14 and 16 inch. Now the final news with these laptops is that 
Apple seems to be getting rid of the touch bar. Now this isn't a big deal to me. I don't really like the touch bar. I thought it was a good idea, but it seems to not be that great in practice. So I basically use it to turn up and down volume or mute volume and turn the brightness up and down on the displays. So it's something that I don't find that I use that much. I thought might be a good idea, but I don't want to take my, my eyes off the screen when using it, maybe saying editing, editing a video and then go back down to the touch bar, back to the screen. It's just something I don't find to be very very convenient. I'd rather have those physical keys back. And if Apple does switch away from the touch bar, I personally would welcome it. I know there's a few people that really like it, but it seems to be most people don't really use it as much as maybe they thought they would. Now, when we're talking about the desktop Macs, such as the iMac or Mac Pro, Apple's expected to update those as well. So according to Mark Gurman, the iMac, which has had the same design for many, many years, is going to get updated to a different design. It may be closer to that of what we have with the iPad, where it's more squared off, we have more squared off designs, a flat back instead of a curved back, and then maybe some ports on the side. We don't really know any details about it yet, other than that Apple's going to redesign it. And it makes sense. We heard some of this information last year where we thought they redesign it, but now them moving to Apple Silicon makes sense to wait until they have that design finalized. And with the iPad Pro, you don't need really any cooling. If you added cooling to it, it would be incredibly fast. And there's said to be two different versions, a 21.5 and 27 inch replacement. So whether or not they're the same size is hard to say, but also you can expect a reduction of bezels, whether it's as thin as the iPad or even thinner is hard to say until we see one, but that makes sense. We've had this huge chin on the iMac for years and to see them finally redesign it is going to be welcomed by a lot of people. Now to go along with the iMac, we may see a less expensive expensive Pro Display XDR. Now, Apple released the Pro Display XDR. It's incredible, but it's also super expensive. So it's five to six thousand dollars, and then you have to buy a one thousand dollar stand or a two hundred dollar vase mount adapter. So with standard or nano texture glass, we've got this super expensive display. I could see Apple introducing a twenty-seven inch display that maybe is around one to two thousand dollars, aimed at creative professionals that want to do HDR work or something along those lines, but not. 6k, maybe a 4k display that's far less expensive than this incredibly expensive pro display XDR. It's a beautiful display, but it's not for most people. So being that it's more than the iMac would be, it makes sense that they would introduce a less expensive display to go along with the other thing they're supposedly going to introduce, which is a smaller Mac pro. Now they're said to be working on two Mac pros this year, according to Mark Gurman, there's going to be the similar Mac pro that we have now along with a mini dis mini Mac pro or something along those lines that would be smaller and more resemble the G four cube that Apple released many years ago. Now having the G four cube come out with a smaller chipset makes a lot of sense to me where it would be smaller, be more compact, less upgradable in the future, be less expensive, and then also go along with a less expensive display. That seems to make a lot of sense. And I think we'll see all of those things later this year. And Apple has said that they're going to be introducing max within two years with M1 chips in them. So we should see most of those things by the end of this year. Now, other than that, the iPad pro of course is going to get an upgrade. And according to 91 mobile, there's leaked CAD images apparently from the factory of an 11 inch iPad pro. It's very similar to the one I'm holding here. Only it's said to have a slightly thinner or thinner width and it's not as tall. So we may see something like that very soon. And Apple updates the the iPad pro every couple of years usually, and it should have a similar design. It should be similarly thin, but like I've said in the past with mini led new display technology, it should be the first with this display according to many rumors. So we'll have to wait and see if that's what Apple does, but I'm looking forward to the next iPad pro and it's said to have a huge bump in performance with the next chipset. So again, we'll have to wait and see, but I look forward to it nonetheless. And then finally Foxconn is ramping up a factory in Vietnam to most likely build the MacBook and iPad. So we should see that sort of as a move in production, not necessarily having to wait till that factory is done for those new Macs, but it's said to be in the works. So it seems like Apple's moving some things out of China into Vietnam, like many other manufacturers. But then again, you never know what they're going to do in the future. So that's it for this week's news. Of course, that's a ton of information and it was really unexpected to see that much at once about Macs, but I'm looking forward to them. Let me know which one you're looking forward most to in the comments below. If you'd like to get your hands on the wallpaper, of course, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. 
I'll see you next time. One more quick thing. Since you stuck around this long, I thought I'd ask since you're probably one of the more dedicated viewers of my videos. So I thank you very much for that. But I wondered if you'd rather have me in front of the camera for these news videos. I've tried that a couple times in the past and it doesn't seem to matter much. And some people have different op opinions. So since you probably watch most of my videos, since you're at this part of the video, I'd love to hear from you as to whether or not you think I should have the top down video like this for the news, or if you'd rather have me in front of the camera and maybe back and forth. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And again, thanks for watching.